Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. In case you didn't know, this is the second part of our two-part Christmas special for December. So, um, go watch the first part if you want to. We covered Jingle All The Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger from 1996. If you don't watch that first part, the end of this episode isn't going to make much sense, so go over there, watch it, you know, do all the usual stuff, like, comment, subscribe, whatever, and then come back here for this episode. So, on top of us giving you the little gift of this episode coming out a day early, we're going to throw in just a little stocking stuffer for this one. We've decided to cut out the entire title sequence. Welcome back. In this second and final Christmas episode, we'll be covering another Christmas movie that's content is much stranger than you would ever expect from looking at the poster. This film comes to us from the magical year of 2004, which gave us such modern classics like The Incredibles, Mean Girls, and Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. You know what, Ben? Some people might argue this Tim Allen film beats all three of those films. You might also be able to say you could punch that person square in the nose for having that opinion. Yeah, folks, uh, we're covering a 2004 modern masterpiece. Tim Allen's Christmas with the Cranks. Every year, they would celebrate Christmas together. Merry Christmas! Until the year their daughter Blair left for the holidays. This won't be the same. Then, Luther got a brilliant idea. We skip Christmas. We'll go bask in the Caribbean sun. We skip Christmas? What's up? No Christmas for you. This jolly holiday film was directed by Joe Roth and stars Tim Allen, Jamie Lee Curtis, Dan Aykroyd, Cheech Marin, and many others. That sounds like a fairly decent cast if you ask me. Ah, yes, but sadly, this cast wasn't able to save this film from the evil that is Christmas critics. It is a term I have just made up this instant. Ah. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has a 5% critic score with a 37% audience score. Over on IMDb, the film sits on a 5.2, and finally on Metacritic, it has a 22 out of 100 meta score and a shockingly high 7.4 and a 10 user score. Ouch, poor Tim Allen. He doesn't deserve this. I think. I suppose we'll find out, hey. Okay, so let's start talking about Christmas with the Cranks. My god, even the opening shot of this film tells us all we need to know about how invested Jamie Lee Curtis and Tim Allen are in their roles. They play married couple Luther and Nora Crank, whose daughter Blair has just gone for a year overseas with the Peace Corps, so she won't be home for Christmas and they don't know what to do without her. I'm, I'm so very sad and just upset that she's not going to be home for Christmas and totally won't show up at the end of the film to make everyone happy again. <laughs> <laughs> After some arguing over some stupid bullshit to do with white chocolate and yelling at a nice old man in a Santa suit I really think you need an umbrella! No! You know why I don't want one of your stupid umbrellas? <laughs> Luther stumbles upon an ad for a luxury cruise that gives him an idea of how the two can spend their holiday season. Okay, are those people really tall or is that ship really close to the shoreline? That's a really minor detail to focus on, dude. Well, maybe people should learn how to use Photoshop better. After calculating the costs and realizing it would be far cheaper than their regular Christmas expenses, Luther pitches it to Nora over dinner. I would just love to forget about it. <sighs> what are you looking at? Finish your pasta. I'm finished with my pasta. It's you I'm not finished with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I can't really blame you for wanting to play hide the salami right there on the kitchen table, Nora. After that face they made at you, I'd be jumping on the Tim train right that instant as well. So after some debating, Luther and Nora decide to go on the cruise and skip the Christmas season. They tell the neighbourhood because apparently it's everybody's business, and everybody in the neighbourhood starts acting extremely strange around them. Strange? Dude, they start acting like some Christmas worshipping cult that will burn anyone at the stake who doesn't celebrate the holiday. Look at this shit! Then why don't you have the party anyway? 
Because we don't want to, Mary. We're taking a break. One year off, no Christmas whatsoever. Good morning, Mr. Scrooge. Laura Crank. We're here for Frosty. Luther. Hey, babe. They're here. Who? Fick Fromeyer, Wes Trott, and Ned Becker, and a gang of their kids. We're here for Frosty. They want Frosty. Laura? Oh! Laura, stop oh! the car. Stop oh! the car. Seriously, do some color and lighting correction, and you could cut a really creepy horror trailer out of this film. Luther. They're here. Fick Frommeyer, Wes Trott, and Ned Becker, and a gang of their kids. Laura Crank, we're here for Frosty. So after making their headlines for getting a fake tan, seriously, we learn that the Crank's neighbor, Bev, is going through cancer for the third time. It's a really odd tone shift after seeing the first half an hour of wacky and weird antics, and especially since we just saw a Bev's husband, Walter, in the same scene, having an argument with Luther over some petty bullshit. I try to be old man. Stop that. Stop what? Stop calling me old man. You're like 10 years older than me. Am I? Yeah. Well, prove it. Yeah, the film seems to have a little bit of an issue when it comes to identity in terms of tone. It's a little messy. Anyway, so after an absolutely unfunny and stupid scene of Luther with Botox in his face... And then, you got all your... Wrinkles are gone. Luther, people are whispering behind our back. <coughs> Blair calls home and says she's coming home for Christmas after all. Surprise! And so the Cranks suddenly cancel their vacation plans and begin a mad dash around town to get their famous Christmas Eve party ready in time for her to get home. This includes Nora almost dying for a can of ham. <laughs> You know, Nori, you could just go back into the store and buy some nice sausages. Make it Christmas with the Kranskis. We also see Luther breaking into someone's house to get a Christmas tree. You sure this isn't illegal? Hey, at least he asked for permission before breaking in. Arnie just did it and look what happened to him. And of course, Luther attempts to put the Frosty statue up, finally. Actually, it was a suicide attempt. Trust me, Tim, we're watching the same movie you're in. We don't blame you. So once Luther is helped down, Vic, the guy Dan Aykroyd's playing, rallies the town to come together and help the crank set up the party before Blair gets home because she is a beloved community figure. Honestly, the movie from this point starts to pick up a little bit and find its footing. It stops focusing on the goofy comedy and shifts into a heartwarming story about a town coming together to help out their neighbours. It's still not great, but it's more enjoyable than anything that's happened up to this point. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Guys, better go to the airport. Why is that? Blair needs a ride home! I don't know if we could do that. Shall I call the chief? Uh, we, we could do that. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, because bolting Dan Aykroy has more power of the police than the actual police chief. Hi! Merry Christmas, Luther! Uh, can I help you? Oh, yeah. oh I'm a little, a little bit early. It's cold out there. Yeah, it's it winter, is really cold. Well, why don't you go and enjoy so yourself? Here, Luther. Hey, Mother's a brisket. It's so nice to see you again. Thank you. I don't know who he is. He brings ham. Oh. I mean, if I'm honest, if someone brought random ham to my house, I'd let them in too. I mean, of course, who wouldn't, right? Anyway, so while the cops are bringing Blair and her fiancé home, they encounter a guy breaking into a home and arrest him. Once they arrive at the party, they go inside and leave the criminal inside the car by himself. Oh boy, I wonder if he's going to rub the cranks. My god, I'm shook. So while the party's going on, Luther tells Nora privately that he's upset they don't get to go on their cruise after all that. And this causes Nora to flip her shit at him 
for being a selfish prick. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, movie. Wait a minute. You gotta stop right there. You keep trying to villainize our main character, Luther, because he wants to go on this cruise. But it's a completely rational thing to do. To get upset that you don't get to go on this cruise after all that. I mean, Christmas is a really tough time for a lot of people. It's stressful, it wastes money, it chews it up. And for someone to want to escape that for one year? What's the problem? You treat it like it's the worst thing in the universe. Anyway, this causes Luther to decide he wants to do something actually nice with the cruise tickets. He walks over to Walter and Bev's house and gives them the tickets no strings attached, so that Bev can have one last great holiday season. This is from us to you. This is a sincere, heartfelt, no strings attached Christmas offering to two very selfless people who are, at this moment, having a very difficult time looking for an excuse. Luther spots a burglar on the roof who falls and is subsequently beaten up by Marty, the guy in the Santa suit from earlier, and the guy from the party that nobody knew who he was. God damn, Marty. You got a quite a swing with that thing. You could have been a baseball player in a past life. Well, Ben, I think he's a bit busy with his other career to take up baseball. Santa always has to work on Christmas Eve. <laughs> He's the... He's the real Santa. He... What the fu- Okay, so now we finish this film, and for the final time this year, it is time for the final verdict. Kaboom! Blam! Oh, excuse me again, dear. So, the first positive for this film is going to be mine, and that's that the third act of this film is mostly pretty good. From the time that the town comes together to help out the cranks to maybe the end of the film for the last five minutes is pretty damn good. It's quite enjoyable. The The Christmas spirit really comes alive in this part, whereas in the rest of the film, there is none. It might as well be Easter. Yeah, I agree with that. Like we said in the in the scripted bit, you know, it all, it just becomes more of a, they stop focusing on the stupid shit that we're doing earlier with the, the dumb jokes and the whatnot, and it just becomes more of an actual movie, which is nice, uh, yeah. rather than just stupid jokes that don't really connect. My first positive is that Jamie Lee Curtis is pretty damn good in this movie. Her and the man you'll talk about in a moment were pretty decent, by no means amazing, obviously, but um, I think you could tell that they really weren't invested 100%, so they just decided, okay, let's give the most over-the-top performances we can, and Jamie Lee Curtis just goes absolutely bonkers, screaming at everything. She's got a bad haircut, thank gosh she's got that grey short stuff now, it's good. Um, that's re relevant to the performance, but it just looks better. <laughs> She's really, really funny in this movie. Um, she just knocks it out the park with the complete batshit insanity that she gives with this performance. Yeah. Okay, moving on to my first negative. Yes. Uh, my first negative is that the rest of the film is boring. Uh, yeah, so up until, as I said before, when the town comes together, everything is pretty stock stand. You can kind of figure out how everything's going to go. It's one of those films that just... The, the story for it is just a straight line. There are no ups and downs yeah. until, as I said, the end of it. So, no, there's not. Yeah, it is just such a boring watch. And watching it, the many times we have for this review, is just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you watch this with your family, it's a once-a-year watch because it's just not... It's nothing you can come back to every, like, few months. Yeah, my first negative. Um, it's really cliched and cheesy. But not in the same way that Jingle All The Way was. That was cliched and it made it work. This is this kind of leans on its cliches, you know. What are you looking at, Gabby? <laughs> <laughs> we have a guest in the studio today. Well, there's a lot of cliches in terms of the story and the characters and whatnot that really don't... Um, I don't know, they don't make it work. They don't really, like... Just like, because you take it. every cliche possible does not mean they'll work together. You have to pick your cliches and make sure they actually match up and become a good story not just yeah hey, it's a cliche get, grab some old people grab the town being mad grab everything being okay in the end uh yeah that doesn't all, always match no my next positive is what ben was leading up to before tim allen is pretty good in this film he does a great job of acting he's funny like yes his jokes are generic cliche jokes but yeah they're pretty funny he knows how to carry the character well so that it doesn't just come across as every other old cranky christmas bloke Cranky. Uh -huh. Get out. <laughs> but yeah, Tim Allen is pretty good in this film, so I really yeah. can't 
I hate you. Move on. My second positive is that Cal keeps calling it a cop out, but you know, it's not actually that easy to make a film look decent, and this one does look decent. You know, it's got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of Christmasy no, stuff. What I call a cop out is when you write down it's shot fairly well. Okay. There's a cat at the door. Everything's just insane today. It's <laughs> Christmas, guys. Everyone's going mental. So yeah, Ben's cop out. Yeah, my cop out. It's shot fairly decently. Um, it's well lit and everything just looks real nice. It looks like a typical... Like, the party especially in that third act looks really nice. It just looks like you want to be there. And, like, the snowy streets and all the Christmas trees and everything. There's something about the Christmas aesthetic that looks really nice. Especially on film and movies and whatnot, so... And when you live in Australia, Christmas looks like shit because it's hot. Christmas just looks like hot, sweaty people in shorts here in Australia. Okay, so my next and final negative is it is incredibly slow paced. You might as well watch the town be mad at him for the first time. That's all you need. Yeah, Don't need it's, anything else. It's literally like, okay, um, so Blair leaves, and then they figure out to go on the cruise, and that's like the first, what, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. Then it's literally a half hour stretch of nothing but people being mad at them. You need to have a bit more variety, but it just, it's all just meshes together until something actually happens. It's not great. My last negative, where is it here? Just to, to completely counteract what I just said, there's a lack of creativity, I think. Not counteract, sorry, it goes together. It's a little bit, um, I didn't get much sleep. Yeah, like I said, there was a half hour stretch of people just being mad at them. There's not much plot development or like creative scenarios to really show off how disgusted the town is. They're just like, hey, put up that statue. Hey, buy some calendars. Hey, donate to the whatever. Don't get a spray tan. Yeah. <laughs> so many... It's still just like, yeah, we're all mildly disgruntled at you, but we're going to show off that we're really, really furious and we're going to tear your house down if you don't put up that fucking Frosty. And then even, like, it's a very cliched story of, um, a fan, like, people being outcasts and then being accepted later on as well. It's just, I don't know. There's nothing really stands out about it that's memorable being like, oh, yeah, that was a really unique thing for Christmas with the Cranks. And you compare it's, that to you compare that to Jingle yeah. who had all sorts of creative ideas, like the bloody rain, like fighting a reindeer and getting it drunk and setting the last act in the parade, in like in the middle of a parade and all that kind of stuff. It's got a lot of that had a lot of ideas, whereas this is kind of just, yep, um, that's happened in another movie, that's happened in another movie. Let's just put it all together and yeah. It's like a crane game. It kind of picks it up and goes, yeah, great idea, and drops it. And doesn't do it. Yeah. I think that's it. Yep. Okay. So final vote done. Boom. Okay, guys, so for the final time in 2017 was Christmas with the Cranks. A pass or a fail? A fail. I typically don't like Christmas films in general, and Christmas with the Cranks is no exception. It has some funny moments and the third act really picks up, but the majority of the film is an unfunny, awkward, creepy at times, and overall fails to capture the spirit of a great Christmas film and therefore I can't see myself ever watching it again. Christmas with the Cranks just stank. Now that we've figured out the movie is in fact a fail, it's time to figure out who is going to open the portal to movie hell. So how do we do that? Well, it's like every other week. We play rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors! Rock, paper, scissors! Fuck. Yes! I'm sick of losing! <laughs> oh my god, the spike on the audio! Okay, Ben, you ready? I'm getting real sick opening this thing, because I'm sure ready. Christmas with the cranks, you've made me cranky! getting to the end of our December Christmas special. We really hope you've enjoyed it and thought it was a great idea. Obviously, this is going to be the last second chance cinema for 2017. And look, you've had four months of us, so let's let's hope you've enjoyed that four months. And next year, we'll get a year out of us. So, hell yeah. Okay, so if you enjoyed the episode, click like, click like button, please. <laughs> um, leave a comment if you have any positive or negative feedback. Uh, we respond to all of it, the very little that we get. But nonetheless, we respond. Um, Subscribe to the channel, obviously, because every subscriber, every view, every everything means a whole lot of a hell of a lot to us. 
whole lot of a hell of a lot to us. Um, I know how to speak English. And of course, share us with everybody you have ever met in your entire life and ever will meet. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us at Second Chance Cinema. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Nah. Well, that was a really stupid idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know yeah. why I thought You know, that. in fact, that was such a stupid idea. We're going to take a whole month off just because of it. I think that's a good idea. No, seriously. We'll see you in February. Bye.